Hello and welcome to my documentary on the Permian extinction. I'm Ben Cronkorn. The Earth has experienced extinction events as long as life has existed on the planet. These events have varied from small and localized instances to mass extinction of life, impacting almost all life forms on the planet. One such event was the Permian mass extinction. This documentary will explore the events leading up to the mass extinction, including the Permian period, the supercontinent of Pangaea, and a look into life on Pangaea. I'll also discuss the causes behind the Permian mass extinction event that almost wiped out all life on Earth, such as the meteor impact, the Siberian traps, and the big methane burp. In addition, I will compare the events of the Permian period with modern climate change and global warming. The Permian period. First off, I'd like to examine what is meant by the term period. The geological time scale is measured in rock layers, and a period on the geological time scale is a single rock system. Periods can be divided into two or more systems called epochs. Moving up the scale, two or more periods will compose an era, and two or more eras will make an eon, which is the largest scale of time. The Permian period lasted for 47 million years. It started 298 million years ago and ended 251 million years ago. Early Permian had been marked by the collision of two continents of the Paleozoic era, America and Gondwana. The result was the formation of Pangaea, the supercontinent. Pangaea was a combination of almost all landmass on the planet, surrounded by one massive and deep ocean called Panthalassa. The climate was controlled by tall mountains, which blocked regular rainfall from occurring across the continent. This meant that the interior Pangaea was very dry and arid. The climate was also subjected to progressive global warming throughout the Permian period, setting the stage for the unprecedented loss of life in the period. Life on Pangaea during the Permian period. The Permian period saw a diverse range of life forms that inhabited both the land and the seas. The plant life included mosses and gymnosperms. The marine life existed in a massive panthalassic ocean. Fossil evidence suggests that the coastal reefs were home to corals and sponges, while other organisms, such as ammonites, brachiopods, spiny and true bony fish, rays and sharks, populated the rest of the ocean. Insects such as arthropods thrived and adapted to the varied environments and conditions spanning across the supercontinent. Animals on the land included two dominant groups, sauropsids, who are believed to be the predecessor to dinosaurs, reptiles and birds, and synapsids, who were the ancestors of mammals. Some examples of these animals were the Dimetrodon, Pelicosaur and the Lystrosaurus, who were all early Permian synapsids. The sauropsids came in the late Permian and gave way to the dinosaurs. The Permian Extinction Event and What Caused It The Meteor Impact Theory When talking about the Permian Extinction Event, two major theories take the spotlight. The first I would like to talk about is the Meteor Impact Theory. This theory suggests that a large asteroid between 6 to 12 kilometers in diameter struck the planet and triggered a long-term global warming and resulted in the Permian Mass Extinction Event much like what happened to the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Sounds plausible? Well, it would, except there isn't any tangible evidence backing this theory. In fact, there is more against the theory. For instance, there is no suitable crater that has been found that has both iridium and shock quartz present, both of which indicate an asteroid impact. But if it wasn't an asteroid, then what was responsible for the Permian mass extinction? What caused 96% of all marine life and 70% of all land species to go extinct? The Siberian Traps The mass extinction during the Permian period was the largest extinction in Earth's history, but what drove that event? Let's examine the second and more widely accepted theory to the cause of the Permian mass extinction the Siberian Traps. The Siberian Traps are referring to the mass volcanism where a huge amount of lava is spewed up out of the earth. In this case, a mantle plume. Basically a giant lava bubble. 
melted up through the crust, causing the Earth to split open and triggering the largest volcanic eruptions the planet has experienced. These eruptions lasted about a million years and covered 3 million cubic kilometers in lava. The eruptions released massive amounts of carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere, altering the atmospheric composition and increasing global warming and the average global temperature. The oceans would have also been drastically affected. Through the absorption of gases, the oceans would have become more acidic and up to 10 degrees hotter, averaging around 36 degrees and purging most of the oxygen in the water. However, all of this happened about 2,000 years prior to the mass extinction event during the Permian period, and all the evidence known points to a second series of events that occurred as a result of the Siberian Traps. The Big Methane Burp The Siberian Traps caused a massive shift in the atmospheric composition and global climate, but it didn't work alone. Its accomplice was brought about as a result of the mass volcanism and is known as the Big Methane Burp. The events began when the oceans were heated by the rapid onset of global warming causing the chemocline to destabilize. The chemocline is a separating layer that divides shallower waters from deeper waters. In this case it separated the water with dissolved oxygen and the water with dissolved hydrogen sulfide under the chemocline. With the mixing of these waters and the ever falling rates of dissolved oxygen, the chemocline began to rise bringing dissolved hydrogen sulfide to surface waters along with anaerobic bacteria that fed on the hydrogen sulfide. This major shift starved the once oxygen-rich waters and killed off oxygen-dependent marine life, whilst creating a positive feedback loop. Following this, hydrogen sulfide then made its way to the atmosphere, poisoning the air and suffocating terrestrial animals and plants. Towards the end of the Permian period, global warming and runaway greenhouse gases saw the atmospheric concentrations of CO2 rise to between 1400 and 3,000 parts per million, while the average sea temperature was around 39 degrees Celsius. By this stage, the atmosphere was saturated by greenhouse gases and the ozone layer came under attack, breaking down the protective layer and allowing ultraviolet radiation from the sun to penetrate the atmosphere and reach the surface, killing off even more life. Comparing the Permian extinction event with modern times. As we are all aware, global warming and climate change are hot topics with the backing of scientific evidence. But how do today's circumstances relate to the events of the Permian extinction? The answer is rising carbon dioxide levels. Carbon dioxide levels are on the rise due to the burning of fossil fuels in modern times. And while this is driven by mankind, the natural events of the Siberian traps and the big methane burp during the Permian period also saw an increase of carbon dioxide buildup in the atmosphere. In 2020, the global average carbon dioxide concentration sits around 410 parts per million, and this is predicted to continue to rise, with models estimating it reaching 900 parts per million by 2100, as depicted in this graph. This is alarming when you consider that global warming can trigger a runaway greenhouse gas effect, much like the Permian extinction and other mass extinction events. In fact, if you look at this graph, you can clearly see the stark contrast to other events in our planet's past and their relative CO2 concentration levels. Just by looking at these numbers, it is obvious that we need to continue working on reducing our CO2 emissions globally. In this documentary, I have explored the Permian period, Pangaea, and the life that inhabits it, and the oceans. I have discussed the Permian extinction event, the theories that help us understand what caused it, such as the meteor impact theory, the Siberian traps and the big methane burp, as well as comparison to mass extinction events and modern times. Taking all this information into consideration, I was taken back by the parallels that can be drawn between the Permian extinction event and our current trending CO2 levels. As they rise, we are facing potentially catastrophic consequences, not just for ourselves, but all life on our planet. Thankfully, I'm not alone in this realisation, and we as a race are taking measures to reduce our collective carbon footprint. However, is it enough? In my opinion, no, not yet. So, in closing, I believe in order to avoid runaway greenhouse gas effects in our future, like what happened during the Permian period, we must continue to reduce our global carbon footprint, or better yet, 
achieve carbon neutrality across the globe, else we face a bleak future. Thank you.